Welcome to another week, another show of Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. Thanks again for tuning in last week. Beth Getz joined us, Hawkeye Athletic Director. I guess I'll say the new, it's been a little over a month, but like she and I said, it's not new anymore. But uh, thanks for tuning in again this week. We've got John Steppe, as you can see right here, going to join me in just a minute, as well as Sean Bach is going to join us in the second segment. And Mike Palm, a, a Northeast Iowa and Iowa native from Dubuque, going to join us this week in our sports betting segment, Scott Pritchard traveling. So Mike Palm, we keep the Northeast Iowa theme rolling. And uh, Mike, again, is the VP of Operations from Dubuque, Iowa, in Vegas, for the district, or the D it's called, also Golden Gate Hotel, and Circa Sports. Main thing we're talking about today, the Circa Sports app and other properties. So that's the show today. John Steppe, Sean Bach, and Mike Palm. And John, great seeing you again. Thanks yes. for joining us. Yes, absolutely. My pleasure. It's been since the first of the year, before the first of the year. been a while. Beth gets in as the new athletic director. But I'd be remiss if I didn't have you give me your two cents about Beth Getz. And a lot of your information in the past was on point, so thank you again. Uh, in talking to Beth last week when I had her on this program, I was able to speak from a pretty good well of knowledge, especially about Brad Stevens. So uh, wax poetic a little bit of it, if you would for us, but also thank you for the info. Yes, absolutely. So Beth gets now permanent athletic director, not really a surprise. Right. Really kind of going back to when she was named interim, there were there's kind of a large chorus of people who yeah. are saying, why only interim? And now you're seeing that kind of what was the inevitability for lack of a better term. Weren't they telling us to January 20th and they officially made it on the 18th of January? So all these little dates, like you said, they were kind of playing it out. Yeah, so they did the formalized search as they were talking about doing and, you know, they crossed their T's, dot their I's, all that. Now she fully is permanent AD and really has come really highly regarded by everybody, yeah. both at previous places where she's worked, both also at Iowa. Yeah. Really, you can't find somebody. Well, the coaches love her, don't they, yeah. as a whole? Yeah, you had, I think it was pretty much every coach in the athletic mm -hmm. department was putting out a statement when she was named permanent AD. So really beloved within the athletic department, really a lot of vocal advocates. Of course, you're gonna have some coaches who are going to do the statement because sure. it's the right thing to do. But you could tell that there are a lot of coaches who really wanted to yeah. speak positively about her. And you saw a lot of female athletes too at her press conference, which was yep. a cool sight to see. Great turnout, you're right. Yeah, so now begins the tenure for her. She's gonna have a lot of monumental decisions to make. You look at it during Gary Barta's 17 years, he didn't have to hire a football coach. He didn't have to hire a women's mm -hmm. basketball coach. That's going to be a little different if Beth stays as long as Gary stays, which is kind of the way it goes yeah. with Iowa athletic directors. And before him, Bullsby, and before him, I mean, they were all yeah. like, that's a long-term position. It seems like it has been anyway. Yeah, but when you look at Kirk Ferentz's age, you look at Lisa Bluter's age, yep. you look at Fran McCaffrey's age, there are going to be a lot of big hires that Beth Getz is yeah. going to be making. And really, as much as everyone has praised her leadership style, a lot of other things, you look at it, how she's going to be remembered, what her yeah. legacy is going to be, is going to really go down to, not entirely, but largely what she does with those coaching hires. You know, so let's do this, John. Let's talk a little bit about uh, Caden Proctor. Iowa has a, uh, I guess it's a hand slap for, for the contact that that uh, they made while he was playing for Alabama as a freshman this year. Can we talk just a little bit about that? You have a little, some insight on that? Yeah, so it was an impermissible contact that Iowa self-reported to the NCAA involving Iowa football recruiting director Tyler Barnes. Kind of a message along the lines of, I'm paraphrasing here, not an exact quote, but along the lines of, hey, keep your head up. When he was facing a lot of criticism when he starts at Alabama. And as a, as a true freshman, yeah, hello. Yeah, true freshman looks like a true freshman in the SEC. Yeah. Deals with a lot of criticism. Tyler Barnes sends that message, and that is an NCAA violation. Yep. A minor one, level three, which is the least severe out of the violation yeah. structure. So not a big deal. This is not something that I anticipate or certainly not something that Iowa anticipates yeah. having any profound impact on him or the program. There's probably going to be some admonishment and education sure. is most likely what we're talking about. But I about think the nice that. thing about the self-reporting, as you mentioned, like from Barbara Wilson in hiring and, and dotting I's and crossing T's 
and uh, University President Barbara Wilson and hiring Beth Getz and now with the football program. In this day and age, especially, not saying they didn't have to before, mm -hmm. but now you really, to your exact point and your words, dotting I's and crossing T's. So shouldn't be anything of, of note, but it is out there. So I just wanted to update people. We'll be catching up more with you as this fall or spring progresses. Fall, here I am at football already. <laughs> but as we talk spring football, which starts in a couple weeks as we record this on uh, Tuesday afternoon, February 27th. So we're a little over, a little less than a month, a little over three weeks away from spring drills starting for the Hawkeye football team. So, of course, folks, you know John uh, with the Gazette and the Gazette.com and all his information at the bottom of the screen here throughout this segment. But Sean Bach will join us after you in 24-7 Sports, and we're going to talk men's and women's basketball with him. And you had uh, Sean on your podcast a little over a month ago, around a month ago. Great stuff. Talked recruiting as well, which Sean and I will. But for your purposes of, of this segment, I love the fact that we get to talk a little women's wrestling. You did some reporting on that, and you filled in for here and there, but primarily football you, you do mm -hmm. for the Gazette. But I love the fact that there's a maximum, the way it was explained to me, and you and I were talking off the air a little bit, Hawkeye women's wrestling, number one in the country right now, first, program, first year as a sanctioned program. But because uh, they're able to have multiple people at a weight class and they can – top out at 15 that qualify for the national tournament. It's more of an invitational because lack of universities and wrestlers different than the men. That's why they have two, uh, more than one person at, at each weight class. But they got the maximum 15 qualified for the first year. Talk to me a little bit about your reporting and your experience with Hawkeye women's wrestling in year one, John. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's truly been a tremendous season. They are they went undefeated in dual competition. <laughs> and not even close for most of this stuff. Yeah, there are only a couple of them that were close. Yep. Like North Central was like a 21-20 or something Correct. like that. Yep. But then came out to the last match, you're right. Yeah. For the most part though, they've been blowouts. Where as you mentioned, <laughs> number one in the duels rankings, number two technically in the tournament rankings. Yeah. There's a lot of things that go into those rankings, but it's really been a tremendous season. As you mentioned, you can max or you can qualify a maximum of 15 wrestlers for nationals, various reasons for that. Right. But they qualify all 15, and you had even some really young wrestlers where they have a young lineup kind right. of in that 125, 130, 136 spot, and you're seeing some of those young wrestlers really stepping up well and. Yeah. It's been an impressive season for them, and Nationals will be, let's see if I can do math now, week and a half, two and a half weeks, somewhere yeah, around there. Yes, yes. Uh, March 8th and 9th, whatever, however many days that is, I can't do math. Uh, but Nationals will be March 8th and 9th in Cedar Rapids, and I anticipate a good showing there. I don't think it's a foregone conclusion. Right. I think that there's some good competition that you we're going to see there. The cream rises to the top with what teams are available. I will say this to you, though, and Beth Getz and I talked about this. She said, let's win national championships in men's and women's wrestling, but they're going to be opening that new wrestling facility on the University of Iowa campus in about a, a little over a month. She said in April they're on track for that. But what a job. I mean, Clarissa Chun, boy, I tell you, when Tom Brands handpicked her and was a part of that hiring head coach for the men's, what a job. In your experience, again, you've interviewed the program, the, women wrestlers, but also Clarissa Chun. How impressive is she, John? Yeah, really impressive coach. Really the perfect person to have at this moment well stated, for this yes. program. And really credit to her whole staff, too, because yeah. she's got Gary Mayab right by her side as associate head coach, who would be more than qualified to be a head coach as well. So yeah. you really have a talented staff. And I think Clarissa also realizes kind of her role in growing the sport. And it's that just, is a really, yeah. you know, as much as the incredible on mat performances have stood out, really Iowa has this opportunity yes. to grow the sport. And she really recognizes and embraces that as well. You know, I will say this, as you mentioned, it may not be a foregone conclusion for the Hawkeye women to win it all this first year, but they certainly have as good a chance as anybody. Oh, yeah. They are going to be the favorite going yep. in with North Central being that really close number two in yeah. my view. Because they won the national duels, as you and I talked yes, about, it, against, but you and North I, Central. against North Central. Now, at the same time, the tournament rankings, match. North Central is technically higher than yep. Iowa. So it'll be a good matchup regardless in Cedar Rapids. <laughs> I love it. I just the, the excitement for every sport we talk about on the University of Iowa campus right now has just been off the rails in a great way. So, folks, there he is, John Steppe with the Gazette. Uh, John, great to see you again. Look forward to catching up with you. Thanks so much. Yes, absolutely. For John Steppe, I'm Dave O'Hara. We'll be back with more Hawkeye with Sean Bach, 24-7 Sports and CBS Sports. Back with more in just a few moments. To have a strong finish, you need an excellent start. 
It's true on the track and also in the field. That's why Mershman Seeds works tirelessly to deliver cutting edge technology year after year. Introducing Starting Line, Mershman Seeds' latest advancement in seed treatment, now providing added protection from white mold and sudden death syndrome all season. Ask for Starting Line Seed Treatment from Mershman Seeds, your friend in the field. Welcome back to Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. There's our buddy Sean Bach from 24-7 Sports and CBS Sports. Uh, Sean, as I mentioned uh, a little over a month ago, you were on with uh, the guy that just preceded you in this show. You were on uh, John Steffi's podcast with the Gazette and thought you guys did a great job. But we'll get to recruiting with you. You're the recruiting expert. We'll talk about that in, in future shows as we get closer to spring football. But, Sean, you put some great work out in the last uh, recent days and weeks here with Hawkeye men's basketball. We're also going to get to Bluter's Bunch with you. Of course, college game day will be here on Sunday before the Ohio State game with Iowa hoping to avenge that loss earlier in the season to Ohio State. And before we get to Bluter's Bunch, let you and I talk about Franz guys. And you told me from the very jump, Sean, even last year that Owen Freeman was going to be a force. Did you have any idea how right you were going to be? Go ahead, get your flowers from me. You can brag a little bit. You nailed that one, my friend. Yeah, I mean, I knew he was going to be good. Like, I knew there was a lot of talent there to work with. I knew there was a lot of skill to work with. But the main thing with him has just been, like, can he put it all together mentally? Can he put together 40 minutes? Or, I mean, I know he's not playing 40 minutes in a game, but can he be physical? Can he, you know, kind of demand? Now it's going to get out of foul trouble, shot. Him out? Yeah, I mean, now it's it's gotten to a point where sometimes you got to let him, like, you know, ease back a bit because he gets into foul trouble fairly easily. But, you know, in high school, it was, it was almost at that point where you would have rather preferred him to have that side of physicality to come out. You know, I felt like at times in high school, he was a little resentful, didn't really realize what kind of type of skill he had. Um, and just really wasn't like, he was kind of soft in a way, um, to put it bluntly. And, you know, now he's trying to find that dynamic of, where he can play physical, but also where he can kind of play more conservative and not, you know, fall into foul trouble as much as easily as he has in, in recent games. And, you know, since he's entered the starting lineup, I think he's done a better job of staying out of foul trouble in some of the recent games. But, you know, some of those games are also the ones where, you know, he's maybe not as impactful as he usually is when he's over aggressive. And, you know, maybe I'm kind of nitpicking a little bit, but just based on seeing him the last couple of years, I've really noticed that. And, um, you know, it, it takes time to figure it out because you see some of these guys, some of these post players um, really figure out how to play without fouling as they get older. And, you know, Zach Eady is a prime example of that. You never really see him in foul trouble. Um, there's been so many others, too, like Luca Garza. I mean, that was a little different, but he was never he was more offensive oriented. So he wasn't going to fall into foul trouble that much. But. I mean, when you look at Owen Freeman, it's, it's hard not to love the NBA upside there, too. Oh, no doubt about that. And that's the thing I think that's changed so much. And, Sean, to your point, I mean, rare is a freshman that welcomes or engages in contact. So I think he's really trying to push that quote-unquote softer pass behind him and just has really gotten it done. Of course. So, Sean, I'd like to get your takeaway my reality or way I'm thinking, Sean, if they can win two of their next three, so they play tonight, as we mentioned, at home against Penn State, then they go this weekend on Saturday to Northwestern, Boo Booey and crew, tough, tough, tough season they've had, winning big games, but losing some games maybe they shouldn't have, and then, of course, they close out the following Sunday at home, Senior Day, against Illinois, and, of course, what a battle it was this last week until the Hawks got outscored down the stretch. Uh, they had it. They lost by 10, but they were tied at 75-75, and in the last five minutes, let the game get away and got outscored 20 to 10, lose 95 to 85. But my quite, and that's top 15 team right now, Illinois, at number 13 or 12, depending what poll you look at. But Sean, realistically, if they win two of their final three games, either Penn State, Northwestern, Illinois, win two games in the Big Ten tournament, which is very doable, and then, then they're at 20 wins. Now, yes, then they would have, you know, 15 or 13, 14 losses. But then you're looking at, okay, 20 wins, and if they go 10 and 10 in the Big Ten, right now, you know, you're on the downside of up below 500, but if you win two of the next three, you'll be at 10 and 10. Is that enough? In the past, 10 wins in the Big Ten regular season, 10 of the 20 games, and a 20 win on top of that, that usually gets you in. What do you think? Is that still a possibility for Franz guys? Yeah, I mean, you got to win tonight against Penn State. That's a definite, and 
you know, honestly, I think, I think to feel like maybe over 50% good, maybe even a little less than that. I think you got to win the rest, the rest of the regular season. So Sean, let's transition to Bluter's bunch game day going to be ESPN game day going to be here on Sunday for Ohio state. Uh, not going to win the Big Ten. Obviously, Ohio State, even with a loss, uh, they've won the outs- outright regular season. But a Big Ten tournament run again, obviously looks like they're going to have host first two-round games, the Iowa Hawkeye women. Sean, if they beat Ohio State, though, on Sunday, and, of course, win tomorrow night at Minnesota, then go on a run and win the Big Ten tourney. Are they then a number one seed? Will it, because they'll go from six to four, they would replace Ohio State in the rankings. Can Bluter's Bunch still get a number one seed, or are they just locked at number two, do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think it depends on what those number one seeds do in the NCAA or in their respective conference tournaments, too. I mean, the Big Ten's a pretty good women's basketball conference at the top of the list. So if you win that tournament, that's, you know, you you got something going for you because then you win some pretty tough games to get there. Um, I've been looked at, like, the total bracketology for the women's side, but just thinking about, you know, you have Ohio State ahead of you right now. Um, you knock them off. That can maybe knock them down a seed. Who knows? Um, number of other teams, too. But I think it really depends on where, where, what happens to some of those other teams that might be ahead of Iowa right now. Because this team seems more like a number two seed to me, just based off, like, you know, how things are going right now. I think you're. I think you nailed it. I, against my uh, my heart and my head, I agree with you. I, I think that probably will be number two, even depending how Sunday plays out. But again, we know the traveling road show either at home or on the road. Caitlin Clark is going to sell them out, and what a what a career if she doesn't come back next year. What a career, Sean, all time leading scorer. But she's near the at or near the top of assists too. Love it when we can talk uh, nationally about Caitlin and Bluter's bunch. But Sean. Great stuff from you as always, folks. He is Sean Bach with 24-7 Sports, CBS Sports. Sean's going to join us as we get closer to spring football as well in the next few weeks. Sean, thanks so much as always for joining us, and I look forward to catching up with you very soon. Yeah, you too, Dave. Thanks for having me again. You're very You're welcome. welcome. Folks, for Sean Bach and John Steffi, we'll be back with more to close out the show in Hawkeye with Mike Palm, an Eastern Iowa native who's now doing big things in Vegas with CircaSports.com and Circa Casinos and the D and also Golden Gate Hotels. So Mike Palm left to close out the show here at Hawkeye. I'm Dave O'Hara. Back with more in just a few moments. Who do you trust to produce the best deal? A seat company that's chasing technology or a seat company that's writing a book on it? Mershman Seeds is a leader in technology. We're independent and family owned. Our sister company, MS Technologies, provides access to world-class traits and genetics. And our starting line seed treatment is second to none. Who can you trust with your yields? Mershman Seeds, your friend in the field. Welcome back to Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. You can see our buddy Mike Palm. He is with Circus Sports out of Vegas. So now we're back in studio and Mike Palm joins us. And, but he is still, we're keeping with the Eastern Iowa or Northeast Iowa theme. He's a Dubuque native. Scott Pritchard traveling right now. But eventually when Scott gets settled again, we are going to have Mike and Scott together. But Mike, first and foremost, is, is for the first time, but great talking to you off the air. Thanks for joining us. And how are you doing? Dave, thank you for having me. Uh, Scott's a good friend. He comes on our shows on VSIN. Did very well in the uh, football handicapping circuit invitational on Friday night. So wherever I can fill in and whenever I can talk to the people in the great state of Iowa, it's always a pleasure. Awesome stuff. Well, I'll tell you this. When Scott was on every week and we were going through there, your Circa contest, the world's largest and best sports book. Again, CircaSports.com, folks, for the Circa Iowa app. You can either go to your Apple Store or the App Store at Apple or Google Play if you're an Android user. But again, best place to find the app as well, CircaSports.com. Good friend of mine, good friend of the show, longtime friend. So you come very highly recommended, my friend. So no pressure. Have fun today, Mike. Thank you. Appreciate that. Of course, you mentioned Gary Dolphin, who, when I was growing up, was our local our, our local sports guy in Dubuque, Iowa. And then, you know, after I left, he made it big and became uh, the voice of the Hawkeyes. Good friend has a great bar in Dubuque. So, it, it's you know, it's all in the family here. Amen. When I had Dolph on, I always promote his bar. And I was just there this last a year ago, last spring. And we talk about that often. So you're right. Cascade guy who settled in Dubuque now. And, and you know that, of course. But 
So, Mike, let's get to it. The Super Bowl's done now, but you guys offer at Circa a lot of different bets and, and availability for bets, props, specials, whatever phraseology you want to put on it. But let's start when I mentioned Caitlin Clark, and she was on this show last year, and we repeated that episode. There are some interesting bets and specials and props. Again, now that the Super Bowl's done, you guys have been crazy busy in Vegas. But I know the NBA, the NHL, we got Major League Baseball. You'll have all types of betting, not to mention March Madness, the conference tournaments for men's and women's. But let's start with Caitlin Clark. What better place to start than that? And what are some of the specials or props you have on Caitlin? Well, you know, we put up her total number of points that she's, she's going to end up with over, under number, assists as well. People, you know, the story of Caitlin Clark, an undersold thing, and we're assuming she's going to go to the WNBA draft and go to Indiana, but you know, she's going to end up fifth or fourth all time in NCAA history and assists. Nobody wants to talk about that. Kim Mulkey wants to talk about people shooting 40 shots a game. She shoots 21, by the way, Kim. Yeah. Uh, you know, so they're coming from everywhere to throw shade on poor Caitlin. It's 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 it's, pre it's pretty comical to me. Uh, and then, of course, all the props for Iowa. Are they going to win the Big Ten tournament? How far will they advance? And then you know, all the props that we'll have for the women's tournament. Will they make the Sweet 16, Elite Eight, Final Four? Will they win it all? So plenty of ways to bet on Caitlin Clark and, and Lisa Bluter and, and the Lady Hawkeyes as, as we head towards March Madness. You know, Mike, it's interesting you mentioned that with Kim Mulkey. I wanted to say, Kim, you know, your team beat Iowa in the championship last year. Why so bitter? But you're right when she made that statement. Caitlin was under 20 shots a game, about 19.5. But you're right, it's kind of gone up a little bit. But as you mentioned, undersold that she's top in assists. And, but let's talk about that app, as you mentioned, with some of these different options and opportunities to wager um, with the Hawkeye men as well. I, I got to believe we're talking about this, that if the men can win their last two or three games as we record this on Tuesday afternoon, February 27th, they got a big game tonight at Penn State at Carver Hawkeye. Then, of course, they play Northwestern uh, this weekend and then close out the season, regular season, at home against Illinois. And what a, a battle that was this last Saturday. But if the Hawks can win two of those three games and win a couple games in the Big Ten tourney, now you're talking a 20-win team. Any action on the Hawks possibly making or not making the postseason, depending on the Big Ten tourney? I think we have about 120 different teams up there, yes, no props. And, and one thing I have to mention, Dave, when we put a team up, will they do it? You can also bet the no. So we always have the two-way market. Many places just have the yes, you can't bet the no. Uh, but we always have uh, two options on each team. I still think they have work to do, and then it'll be in the hands of the committee, but I thought they were dead in the water two weeks ago. So big win over Wisconsin in that overtime game last Saturday or two Saturdays ago. Gave them a little bit of momentum. They were right there with Illinois. I thought, boy, that would have been a huge win on the road against a top 15 team. Couldn't get it done, but but they're still alive, uh, so there's still hope. I have to tell you that in the state of Iowa, even with Caitlin Clark and the popularity that she's shown and millions of, of folks viewing women's college basketball for the first time in terms of betting, nothing moves the needle like the wrestling. Uh, it, it's still our number one handle for circus sports to Iowa. Uh, and it's, it's just been great to help our growth. When we started putting the wrestling up there a couple of years ago, all the Iowa and Iowa state matches. And of course uh, the big 12 and big 10 uh, tournaments and then the national meet. So uh, we hear you. That was one of the requests when we first came online. We want to be able to bet wrestling, not just once a year or twice a year. We want to be able to bet it regularly during the season. And so we've heard that and we've appreciated, uh, you know, the loyalty to it. Mike, you are a true pro. As folks, as I mentioned, Mike hosts his own show on Beeson. And uh, that's exactly where I was headed next. Even talked to Beth Getz about that, the new uh, Hawkeye athletic director, a, a little over a month into the position of full time. And she said, I learned right away, wrestling in Iowa, and now even women's wrestling, as you know, number one in the country, and they're starting their national tournament upcoming with the men. And so I love the fact that you walked right into that before I could even take you there. You truly are an Iowa native. You know wrestling, don't you, Mike? Absolutely. I mean, uh, and we grew up in the era, you know, where Gable was winning it, was winning it every year. And they were, you know, probably the most dominant run in any sport, men's or women's at the collegiate level still. I would say, in the history of the NCAA. Mike, I knew this would happen. The time goes so quickly, and, and you covered it all right there. And I love the fact that when we talk to you about you know college wrestling, Iowa Hawkeyes, and as you mentioned with Bluter's Bunch, Caitlin Clark, not just the men in March Madness, but all the other options. And I can't wait to talk football with you now that spring football is going to be coming out at Iowa and Cade McNamara and, of course, Luke Lachey, tight end university. The tradition continues. He's coming back. He's going to be on this show in a couple of weeks. 
Mike Palm, folks, right there, uh, VP of Operations for Circa Sports, or the Circa, the world's best and largest sports book. Check out the Circa app, circasports.com, or go to your uh, Apple App Store or also uh, Google Play via Android. Again, circasports.com. He is Mike Palm. Mike, thank you so much, and I look forward to catching up with you next week. Great stuff, man. What a, what a great uh, – now you got you raised the bar too high, and now you've got too much to live up to next week. All right, thanks, Dave. We'll see you in another week. Truly my pleasure. For my Palm folks, I'm Dave O'Hara. Thanks also to John Steffi and to Sean Bach, my production partner, Mike Merrick. That's all from us at Hawkeye. Thanks to all of you. And as always, thanks for staying tuned at the end of the program for these rolling credits to give our advertisers and sponsors the attention and credit they so richly deserve. And as always, to our aforementioned guests and to you, the viewers. That's all from us at Hawkeye. Thanks to all of you.